Hello everyone. So here we shall solve some more KCET previous year questions on the chapter mechanical properties of fluids. So any doubts if you are having in any of the questions or in any steps of the solution if you are unable to understand then please write that in the comments section we shall clarify them in the subsequent videos and if you feel uh, more difficulty in any of the chapters of physics then also please mention the name of that chapter in the comments section uh, then we shall give more priority on it and solve more and more questions on it so that it would be helpful for your KCT exam um, and also the home homeworks on every chapter will be uploaded in the sapiens education application so please install our sapiens education application this link has been provided in the description so here we shall start with the very first question of this class on mechanical properties of fluids so here it has been told that a rectangular vessel when full with full of water takes 10 minutes to be emptied through an orifice in its in its bottom how much time will it take to be emptied when half filled with water so there is a rectangular vessel rectangular vessel it takes 10 minutes to be emptied through an orifice and so when it is full of water then here there is an orifice through which the water is flowing out so when the height is h then we know that the speed speed at which the water will flow out that is given as root over 2 gh So, therefore, uh, let's say the height of the water level decreases at the rate of minus dh by dt. So, therefore, we can say that here the area is A, suppose. So, I can say that A into minus dh by dt that is equal to the here the area of cross section, the area of the orifice is suppose a so i can say it is a into root over 2 gh and now therefore we can say that this is minus dh by root h that will be equal to a root 2 g divided by a into dt so then we can integrate on both sides here h will go from h will go from h to 0 it will go from 0 to t 0 to t so then if you integrate it then we will get minus of h power minus half plus 1 by minus half plus 1 that is equal to a root 2 g divided by a into t so and this will go from h to 0 so this will be half so this will be minus 2 root h and that is going from h 0 to uh, h to 0 that is equal to a root a root 2 g by a into t so if we solve it then we will get that is 2 root h that is equal to a root 2 g divided by a into t so therefore t is coming t is equal to a by a into 1 by root 2 g into 2 root h is coming so therefore uh, we can write t as a by a into square root of 2h by g 
where A is the area of the surface, area of the rectangular vessel and A is the area of the orifice. A is the area of the orifice here. Area of the orifice. Area of the orifice and capital A is the area of the surface of the vessel. Area of the surface of the rectangular vessel. So here actually we are using A1, V1 that is equal to A2, V2 which is the equation of continuity. Equation of continuity. So then it is told that this T is equal to 10 minutes if the height is full, the height full height is used. So, if you want, we can take it as capital H. Suppose the actual height is suppose capital H, and at any instant at time t it is equal to h. Let's say this is capital H, so this will be capital H. Okay. So when h equal to full height, when full height is used to be. Okay. So all these are constants so from here we can say that t is proportional to the height root over the height height which is used okay so therefore t is equal to square root of h okay so therefore t1 by t2 that will be equal to root over h1 by root over h2 so t1 is equal to 10 minutes when h1 is equal to the full height h so then it is asked to find is being asked to find that how much time will it take to be emptied when half filled with water when half filled so when h2 equal to h by 2 then the time required t2 that is how much so therefore i can say that this is t1 10 minutes divided by t2 so that is equal to square root of h divided by square root of h by 2 so therefore this will be so 10 minute divided by t2 that is equal to root over h by h into 2 so that is root 2 so therefore t2 will be equal to 10 minute divided by root 2 so that is 5 to the 10 so 5 root 2 minutes which is approximately 5 into 1.414 minutes which is approximately 5 4 the 20 the 5 7 and 5 4 the 20 5 the 5 7 so 7.07 7 minute or approximately 7 minutes we can say 7 minute approx it will take to empty the vessel if it is initially half filled so option b is the correct answer then in question number 2 it is told that if there were no gravity which of the following will not be there for a fluid if there were no gravity which of the following will not be there for a fluid if there were no gravity of the following will not be there for a fluid okay. um, so when no gravity is there so the viscosity is independent of the gravity acceleration due to gravity and the surface tension is also independent of the gravity only the pressure is pressure depends on the gravity so pressure is rho g h archimedes upward thrust so pressure will not be there pressure 
gravity okay, so here the Archimedes upward thrust Archimedes upward thrust is it is V rho into G so it it is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body is equal to the weight Archimedes upward thrust that is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid or weight of the fluid that is displaced by the body so when there is no gravity there will be no weight so therefore option D is the correct answer So here, water rises in plant fibers due to the capillarity. Okay. Due to the capillarity, water rises in the plant fibers. So option A is the correct answer. Then it is told the cylindrical tube of a spray pump has cross section. 8 cm square cylindrical tube of a spray pump cylindrical tube of spray pump has a cross section area area of cross section a1 that is 8 cm square one end of which has uh, 40 fine holes okay. one end one end has 40 fine holes each having area of cross section each is having area of cross section a which is small a which is 10 power minus 8 meter square and a1 8 centimeter square i can write it as 8 into 10 power minus 4 meter square since 1 centimeter is 10 power minus 2 meters so 1 centimeter square is 10 power minus 4 meter square so if the liquid flows inside the tube with a speed of 0.15 meter per second if the liquid flows inside the tube with a speed of 0 0.15 meter per second the speed with which the liquid is ejected through the holes so now here we shall use the equation of continuity equation of continuity we know that when the area of cross section will be less than the velocity with which the liquid flows out will be higher since you know that a into v that is constant according to the equation of continuity so when the area of cross section is less so v is inversely proportional to a so it it means that the if the area of cross section is lesser then the velocity of flow of the liquid will be higher so therefore we can say that a1 v1 that is equal to a2 v2 so now a1 that is the area of cross section of the tube that is 8 centimeter square which is 8 8 to 10 power minus 4 meter square into the velocity that is 0 0.15 meter per second that is equal to a2 which is the area of the hole i can say that is a2 is 10 power minus 8 meter square into the speed is has been asked v let it be v2 so v2 we have to find so therefore v2 will be equal to 8 into 10 power minus 4 into 0 0.15 divided by 10 power minus 8 this much in meter per second so this will be uh, equal to 8 into 10 power 4 into 0 0.15 so this will be 800 into 15 meter per second So this is 10 power 8. This is 800 and 215. So this will be. So there are 40 holes actually. So we have to do this into 40 actually. Into 40. Into 40. So 5 8s are 40. 5 3s are 15. 3s are 15, okay. There is something wrong here.
so that would be uh, 0 0.03 into 10 power 4 5 to 40 Uh, the speed is in meter per second okay so this is coming 300 meter per second okay 300 meter per second is not there okay Zero point one five eight five are forty, then five three are fifteen. The liquid flows inside the tube with the speed. So here no option is coming. Okay. Then um, in the question number five, a uh, body weighs 50 gram in air and 40 grams in water. How much would it weigh if it, in a liquid of specific gravity 1.5? So here we know that the apparent weight which is mg dash that is equal to mg minus V rho into G, V rho G, where rho is the density of the liquid in which it is immersed. Now V rho G is the force of buoyancy or the upthrust, it is the, the buoyancy force or the upthrust. Now V, now therefore we can say that it weighs 50 gram in air and 40 gram in water so mg that is equal to 40 gram weight 40 gram force I can say and mg dash that is equal to 50 uh, no mg is 50 gram force and mg dash is 40 gram force so therefore the upthrust that is v rho into g that is equal to 10 gram force since it will be equal to mg minus mg dash which is the actual weight minus the apparent weight now V therefore volume of of the liquid if it is suppose the volume of the body is V then we can say that V into the density the specific gravity of water we know that the specific gravity or the relative density of water is 1 so I can say V into 1 that is equal to 10 so density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube and let's say the volume is v centimeter cube so this will be 10 grams so therefore okay. so 
the volume is 10 centimeter cube actually so therefore how much would it weigh in a liquid of specific gravity 1.5 so if the specific gravity if the specific gravity of the liquid the liquid is 1.5 gram per centimeter cube uh, sorry it is 1.5 then it means that the density of the liquid will be the density of the liquid is the density of the liquid is 1.5 gram per centimeter cube so now therefore the apparent weight in that liquid let's say it is mg dash that will be equal to mg which is the actual weight minus v v into rho dash into g so that will be mg that is the actual weight is 50 gram force minus that is 10 into 1.5 gram force so that will be 15 15 gram force so that will be 35 gram force so it will weight it will weigh 35 grams 35 grams so option d is the correct answer then in question number six it is told two solid pieces one of steel and the other of aluminium when immersed completely in water have equal weights two solid pieces one is made of steel and the other is made of aluminium other is made of aluminium so when they are completely immersed in water they are completely immersed in water uh, they have got equal weights when the solid pieces are weighed in air Which one will weigh the more okay so suppose the actual weight of the steel suppose the actual mass of steel that is m s and the actual mass of uh, no suppose the actual mass of steel is m1 and the actual mass of steel actual mass of the aluminum is m2 so now therefore we can say that the apparent weight that is m1 into g dash that will be equal to m m1g minus v v1 into density of water into g and similarly the apparent weight of the aluminium in water so it has been told that the apparent weight of the apparent weight of steel in the water that is equal to the apparent weight of the aluminium in water then we have to compare their weights in air so it means we have to compare their actual weights so and we can say that the apparent weight of aluminium m2 g dash that will be equal to the actual weight which is m2 g minus v2 rho w into g where v1 is what v1 is the volume of the steel v1 is the volume of the steel So we know that so V1 is the volume of the steel solid piece so the steel piece piece which is made of steel and V2 is the volume of the aluminium piece aluminium piece so now therefore V1 V1 will be equal to M1 divided by the density of steel that is suppose rho 1 and v2 which is the volume of the aluminium piece that will be m2 which is the mass of the aluminium divided by rho 2 which is density of aluminium so now rho 1 and rho 2 we have to compare we have to compare rho 1 and rho 2 we have to compare rho 1 and rho 2 so now density of aluminium
so we know that the density of steel is obviously more than the density of aluminium now the density you know that density of steel is greater than the density of aluminium density of aluminium solid pieces one of steel or solid okay. so they have equal weights when they are immersed in water so therefore it is given that m1 g minus v1 into rho w into g that is equal to m2 g V2 into rho W into G. Now, therefore, so all the G will cancel out. You have to find if M1 is more or M2 is more. Therefore, I can say that M1 minus V1 into W that is equal to M2 minus V2 into rho W. Okay. So M1 is V1 into rho 1 minus V1 into rho W that is equal to M2 into sorry V2 into minus rho W. So now, therefore, I can say V1 by V2 that is equal to rho 2 minus rho W divided by rho 1 minus rho W. Minus root of root divided by rho one minus root of root. So now, so now rho two is greater than rho one. So therefore, rho two minus rho of root. Sorry, rho density of steel is more than the density of aluminium. So it means that dense rho one is greater than rho rho two. Rho one is greater than rho two. So therefore, rho one is greater than rho two. So therefore, I can say that rho one minus rho of root. Sorry. So row two is less than row one. So therefore, row two minus row w is also less than row one minus row w. So therefore, I can say that v one is less than v two. V one is less than v two, so it means that uh, v one is less than v two. Now, suppose if their volume is kept same, then V one. So when the solid is weighed in air, so their weight, weight of the steel in the air, weight of steel in the air, that is equal to m1 into g. So that is v1 into rho1 into g. And weight of weight of the aluminium, aluminium in air, that will be equal to m2 into g. That is equal to v. V2 into rho2 into g.
parts completely have equal weights let's say solid pieces suppose they are of equal volume it is not told that they are of equal volume or not so if their masses are kept same masses are kept same then their weight also will be the same if their volume is kept same volume is kept same then so here so here it is that if the if the volume is kept same v1 equal to v2 Say that m1 g minus v1 into rho w into g that is equal to m2 g minus v2 into rho w into g. Now these two are kept same, so these two I can cancel. So I can cancel then if volume is same, then their weight also is coming the same. So volume so if their volume is same then their weight also should weight in here also will be the same but if their volume is not same then the density of steel is greater and they then in that case they may have the same weight also So V1 is less than V2 and Rho1 is greater than Rho2. So now V1 into Rho1 into G that may be equal to or it can be greater than or it can be less than also. So V1 Rho1 into G and V2 Rho2 into G that so we know that density aluminium sorry yeah. so now therefore let us take the ratio so this is rho 2 this is less than 1 actually so now v 1 into rho 1 into g divided by v2 into rho 1 into g so that will be equal to rho 2 minus rho w into rho 1 divided by rho 1 minus rho w into rho 2 okay so we know that density of aluminium so this will be the weight of the steel in the air the actual weight of steel in air divided by the weight of the aluminium in the air so that will be equal to density of steel the density of steel that is approximately 8000 i can say so 8000 so it is 8 gram per centimeter cube approx so 8 minus 1 is 7 into rho 1 uh, that is uh, density of sorry density of aluminium that is 2.8 so 2.8 minus 1 that is 3.8 3.8 into density of steel that is 8 divided by that is density of steel so 8 minus 1 that is 7 7 into density of aluminium that is 2.8 so this will be approximately how much so 7 this will be 3.8 so 4 7 the 28 4 to the 8 then 38 so this is 7 5 so that is 38 to the 2 8 the 16 to the 6 76 
and sons of 14 and so this is greater than 1 so therefore obviously the steel will weigh more steel will weigh more steel will weigh more in here so therefore the option b is the correct answer since we know that the density of steel density of steel that is rho 1 i am saying that is approximately 8 gram per centimeter cube and and the density of aluminium that is approximately 2.8 gram per centimeter cube and the density of water we know that is 1 gram per centimeter cube so if you place the values if we place the values here then we are getting this then so v1 rho1 into g is the weight of the steel in the air and v1 and v2 rho2 into g is the weight of the aluminium in the air so if we place the values of rho2 rho, rho w and rho1 then we are getting some fraction which is more than one so it means that weight of the steel in air is more than the weight of aluminium in the air then here it is told that the horizontal tube of non-uniform cross section has radii of 0 0.1 meter and 0 0.05 meter respectively at m and n for a streamlined flow of liquid the rate of flow of the liquid is so the rate of flow of the liquid is that is rate of flow of the liquid So now according to the equation of continuity according to the equation of continuity we know that a1 into v1 that is equal to a2 into v2 it means if the area of cross section is higher then the velocity of the flow will be lesser and if the area of cross section is lower then the then the velocity of the liquid flow will be higher so therefore here a1 is pi r1 square into v1 that is equal to pi r2 square into v2 since the cross sections are circular circular cross section the so pi and pi will cancel so therefore v into r square we can say that is constant so it means that uh, equal to constant so v is inversely proportional to r square it means that if the radius of cross section is lesser then the velocity will be higher so it means that the radius at the point n that is equal to 0 0.05 which is half of the radius at the point m which is radius at the point m is 0 0.1 meter so it is half of this so therefore the rate of liquid flow will be greater at n now the velocity will be uh, higher at m now the velocity at n now since the radius at n is lesser than the radius at m now therefore the velocity of at n that will be the that will be greater than the velocity at n m but the rate of liquid flow is given by area into volume area of cross section into volume the rate of liquid flow the rate of liquid flow that is given as dv by dt d the rate of means it is the volume flow rate by time so that is equal to area into volume only so that will be always constant it means that the rate of liquid flow will be same at the point m and n so option d is the correct answer so even if the velocity at the point n is greater than the velocity at the point m but the rate of the liquid flow is area into volume so that is constant now it is told that three liquids of equal masses are taken in three identical cubical vessels 
so three identical cubical vessels are there a b and c uh, they are having equal masses also equal masses three identical vessels a b and c equal masses it means m m and m three liquids it means their densities are not same their densities rho a and rho b are respectively so rho a is the density of the liquid a rho b is the density of the liquid b and rho c is the density of the liquid c but they are rho a is the least and rho c is the highest the density of c is the highest the force exerted by the liquid on the base of the cubical vessel is on the base of the cubical vessel the force exerted so we know that the force is equal to pressure into area of cross section pressure into area so the pressure is equal to rho g h rho g h into a now h into a is the volume of the liquid so volume into rho that is the mass of the liquid present in the vessel into g now here it is told that since mass of the liquids in the vessel are same therefore the weights of the liquid that will be equal to the force exerted on the base the force exerted on the base will be equal to the weight of the liquid present in the vessel that will be equal to mass of the liquid present in the vessel into g so since mass of the liquid present in all the vessels are the same so therefore weight of the liquid and the force that is exerted on the base will also be the same so option c is the correct answer that same force will be exerted by the vessel same force same force is exerted by the vessels on the base uh, same force is exerted by the liquids on the base of the vessel base of the vessel then it is told that water is in streamline flow along a horizontal pipe with non uniform cross section so it is having non uniform cross section it is uh, along a horizontal pipe at a point on in the pipe where the area of cross section is 10 cm square so where, here the area a1 that is 10 cm square here the velocity of the water v1 that is 1 meter per second and the pressure pressure p1 that is 2000 pascal the pressure at another point where the area of cross section is 5 area a2 is 5 meters 5 cm square the pressure at this point p2 will be how much okay so here we have to apply the bernoulli's principle also and the equation of continuity also so therefore according to the equation of continuity according to the equation of continuity to the equation of continuity we can say that uh, sorry a1 v1 that is equal to a2 v2 now therefore a1 is 10 cm square into v1 that is 1 meter per second that is equal to a2 which is 5 cm square into v2 so here how much is the velocity of flow that also we have to find velocity of the water flow so cm square cm square will cancel then 5 to the 10 so the v2 will be 2 meter per second and then we can we have to apply the bernoulli's principle and then according to the bernoulli's principle we have according to the bernoulli's principle you can say that um, p plus half rho v square plus rho g h that is equal to constant now here there is nothing told about the height so it is told that the the pipe is kept horizontal only so it means the height is not changing at any point so therefore this we can cancel it since height is kept constant only so therefore i can say p1 plus rho1 half rho1 into v1 square that is equal to p2 plus half rho2 into v2 square now rho1 equals to rho2 since why it is an incompressible fluid we should assume 
means the density of the fluid is not changing density is not changing so therefore we can write that p1 plus half rho v1 square that is equal to p2 plus half rho v2 square the density is not changing it means that it is an incompressible fluid we have to assume that so p1 that is so the density of water only we have to use which is 1 gram per centimeter cube 1 gram per centimeter cube or we can say it is 1010 power 3 kilogram per meter cube now the pressure is 2000 p1 is 2000 pascal so 2000 so pascal is the si unit of pascal is the si unit of pressure pascal is one pascal is also called one newton per meter square so 2000 plus half rho that is 10 power 3 into v1 square v1 is one so one square that is that is equal to p2 which we have to find p2 we have to find here plus half rho that is into 10 power 3 into v2 square v2 is 2 so 2 square so therefore we will have p2 will be equal to 2000 plus this is 500 2 into 500 is, is 1000 so 500 minus this is half into 4000 half into 4000 that is 2000 so 2000 and 2000 will cancel so p2 will be equal to 500 500 pascal so option D is the correct answer. Okay, so hope you have understood this um, solution. If you are unable to understand any steps of the solution or any other doubts you are having, then please write us in the comments section. When eight equal drops of water are falling through air with a steady velocity eight equal drops are falling through the air with a steady velocity of 10 centimeter per second if the drops combine to form a single drop big in size then the terminal velocity of this big drop is terminal velocity of this big drop is okay So here, this 8 equal drops are falling with a steady velocity. It means this is the terminal velocity of these each of these 8 drops. So this is the terminal velocity of each of these 8 drops. So if they combine, then we can say that 8 into 4 by 3 pi r cube means the volume of each drop 8 into the volume of each drop that will be equal to the volume of the single drop which is 4 by 3 pi capital R cube so 4 by 3 pi 4 by 3 pi will cancel so r cube is equal to 8 r cube so r equal to 2 r so the radius of that larger drop will be twice of the radius 2 r so now we know that terminal velocity of a drop having radius r terminal velocity that is given as v that is given as suppose v naught we say v naught is equal to uh, uh, which is 2 r squares rho minus sigma g 2 by 9 eta 2 r square into rho minus sigma g by 9 eta where r is the radius of the drop r is the radius of the drop radius of the liquid drop and rho is the density of the liquid drop density of the liquid drop and sigma is the density of the air of the air and rho is the viscosity viscous uh, rho is the coefficient of viscosity of the air viscosity of the air and g we know that is the acceleration due to gravity of the air due to gravity. 
so but how can we obtain it simply we can say that uh, 6 pi eta rv eta rv so when one drop is falling through the air then one is the the buoyancy force which is v rho g v sigma g where sigma is the density of air and the weight of the liquid that is v rho into g and the viscosity force of viscosity which is 6 pi eta rv when it is falling down through a with a velocity v so then the, we can say that 6 pi eta rv plus 4 by 3 pi r cube into sigma g that is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho g so if we cancel the pi values then we see that 6 eta rv that is equal to 4 by 3 r cube into g into rho minus sigma now 2 3 is 6 2 4 is 4 so i can say that this will be r and r square that will come so this will be uh, v will be equal to 2 r square rho minus sigma into g by 9 eta okay where eta is the coefficient of viscosity of the air so now therefore we can say that rho sigma g eta and all these will remain constant since here only only the radius is changing all the other remaining things are constant so therefore v is directly proportional to r square we can say if the remaining things are kept constants if rho rho sigma g eta are constants so therefore you can say that v1 by v2 that is equal to r1 square by r2 square so so here it is that when r1 square equal to r then v1 is told the terminal velocity is given as 10 cm per second so then when uh, r2 that is equal to 2r which is your since r is equal to 2r when the eight equal drops will combine to form a single larger drop then its radius will be twice of the radius so then what will be the terminal velocity v2 that we have to find so therefore simply i can write uh, that v1 10 cm per second divided by v2 that is equal to uh, so that is uh, r1 is r divided by 2r whole square so r and r will cancel so that is 10 cm per second that is by v2 that is equal to 1 by 4 So therefore, v2 is equal to 40 centimeter per second. 40 centimeter per second. So option A is the correct answer. Then here it is told two capillary tubes of different diameters are dipped in water. Two capillary tubes of different diameters are dipped in water. Two capillary tubes are there. are having different diameters different diameters one is this and one is this the rise is same in both the tubes get okay so now uh, so occur so so the formula which is used for the capillary rise is that the formula for the capillary rise in a tube formula for the capillary rise in a tube is given as uh, given as formula for the capillary rise in a tube that is given as uh, h is equal to 2d cos theta by rho g r 2d cos theta by rho g r where t is the, the value of surface tension of the liquid t is the surface tension of the liquid surface tension of the liquid and theta is the angle of contact angle of contact and rho is the density of of the liquid and g is the acceleration due to gravity and r is the radius of cross section of the tube of the capillary tube so therefore if all the remaining things are constant then we can say that h is proportional to 1 by r 
if this t theta and rho g are constants rho and g these are constants in the t okay so h is the the height height of the capillary the height to which the liquid will rise in the tube so now therefore if the radius is greater then the capillary rise will be lesser it means that means what that uh, the capillary tube which has lesser ra ra radius or lesser diameter we know that diameter of the tube that will be equal to twice of the radius 2r so it means that the capillary tube the capillary tube having greater diameter the capillary tube having greater diameter uh, will have lesser capillary rise will will have lesser rise of water will have lesser rise of water so the water will rise lesser for the tube having greater diameter so the rise of water is greater in the tube of smaller diameter so if the radius or the diameter is smaller then the rise the height to which the liquid will rise that would be higher so option c is the correct answer that the rise of water is greater in the tube of smaller than smaller diameter so if the diameter is smaller then the rise of water is greater then it is told spheres of iron and lead having same mass are completely immersed in water spheres of iron and lead having same mass this is iron sphere and this is a lead sphere this is a lead sphere having the same mass so here the mass and here the mass is same are completely immersed in water they are completely immersed in water completely immersed in water density of lead is more than that of iron so density of lead is more than that of density of iron then apparent loss of weight is w1 for the iron sphere here the apparent loss apparent loss for the weight apparent loss of weight for the iron sphere is w1 and here the apparent weight apparent loss of weight for the lids sphere is w2 apparent loss of weight is w1 for iron sphere and w2 for the lid sphere then w1 by w2 is how much so w1 the apparent loss of weight is same as the the buoyancy force or the up thrust so the up thrust is w1 so that will be v1 into rho 1 into g where rho 1 is the density of iron rho 1 is density of iron and rho 2 i am saying it is the density of the lid so therefore i from here we can see that rho 1 is greater than no sorry rho 2 is greater than rho 1 rho 2 is greater than rho 1 density of lead is greater than density of iron so w1 is v1 into rho1 into g and w2 is v2 into rho2 into g and it is told that their masses are same they have same mass so sorry this will be v1 into rho w into g that is the up thrust force which is the weight of the water that is displaced by the sphere it is weight of the water displaced up thrust or the buoyancy force is same as the weight of the water displaced by the sphere 
so that is v1 into rho w into g right, which is w1 and w2 is v2 into rho w into g now therefore w1 by w2 that will be equal to v1 into rho w into g divided by where rho w is the density of water rho w is density of water since they are immersed in water only so we should use the density of water here and that so w1 by w2 is v1 into rho w into g divided by v2 into rho w into g so rho w into g rho w into g will cancel so that is v1 by v2 and since there the the volume of the iron i am saying it is v1 so volume of the iron is mass of iron divided by density of iron divided by v2 which is the volume of the lead so that that will be mass of the lead divided by density of the lead so that will be rho 2 by rho 1 so now rho 2 is greater than rho 1 so therefore rho 2 by rho 1 is greater than 1 so it means that w1 by w2 is also greater than 1 so option d is the correct answer Then here it is told that two solids P and Q float in water. It is observed that P floats with half its volume. P floats with half its volume. P. Half of the volume is inside. <coughs> half of the volume of P is inside the water and solid q floats with two third of its volume is immersed so two third of it two third of the volume is immersed so this is q and it is immersed in water so two third of its volume of q will be inside water then the ratios of the densities of p and q means rho p is to rho q q it means that we have to find rho p by rho q that we have to find ratios of the ratio of densities of p and q is okay <coughs> so therefore we can say <coughs> that the weight when any object is floating then the weight of the solid that should be equal to the upthrust that is the the buoyancy force so that will be equal to volume of the submerged part volume of the submerged part is half into simply I can tell that weight of the solid that should be equal to volume of the submerged part into density of water into G so weight of the solid that will be equal to volume of the actual the total volume of the solid into density of the solid density of the solid into the into g that is equal to vs volume of the submerged part into density of water into g so these two will cancel so then we can say vs by v that is equal to rho by rho w so that will float only if the density of the solid that should be obviously less than the density of water so therefore the fraction of the submerged part the volume of the submerged part that is equal to density of the solid divided by density of water into the actual volume of the solid so now therefore p s by v for for the solid p is where v s is what v s i am saying it is the volume of the submerged part volume of the submerged part and v is the total volume of the solid v is the total volume of the solid so 
volume of the submerged part of the solid divided by the volume the total volume of the solid for solid p that is equal to half and vs by v means the fraction of the volume which is submerged for the solid q for the solid q that is equal to 2 by 3 therefore we can say that vs by v that is equal to rho by rho by rho w now therefore rho by rho w for the solid p for the solid p that is equal to and rho by rho w for the solid q for the solid q that is equal to 2 by 3 that is equal to 2 by 3 so now therefore rho p by rho w that is equal to half so therefore rho p rho p that is equal to rho w by 2 and rho uh, rho of q that is equal to 2 by 3 into rho w so now therefore rho p by rho q that is equal to rho p by rho q that is equal to rho w by 2 divided by 2 by 3 rho w so that will be rho w rho w will cancel so that is half by 2 by 3 so that is half divided half into 3 by 2 so that is 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 is the answer so option b is the correct answer then it is told a, a flow of liquid is streamlined if the reynolds number is so we know that if the reynolds number r is less than thousand then the flow is streamlined flow. then the flow is a streamlined flow streamlined flow and if the value of r is uh, greater than thousand but less than two thousand thousand then the flow becomes unsteady the flow becomes unsteady it means that uh, it is a. It means that some sometimes it is streamlined and sometimes it is turbulent. And if the value of R is greater than two thousand, then the flow is turbulent. The flow is turbulent. So R is less than 1000, so then the flow is streamline flow. So option B is the correct answer. Then it is told that, <coughs> in question number 15 it is told, an ideal fluid flows through a pipe of circular cross section with diameters 5 cm and 10 cm as shown. The ratio of velocities of fluid at A and B is. so. The diameter at the point A that is equal to 5 centimeter and the diameter at the point B that is 10 centimeter. So I can say that the radius at the point A is 2.5 centimeter and the radius at the point B, the radius of cross section at the point B is 5 centimeter. So we know, so by the equation of continuity, we can say that by the equation of continuity of continuity we can say that a1 into v1 that is equal to a2 into v2 means that the area of cross section into the speed of flow or the velocity of the fluid that is equal to the that is equal to constant it means the area of cross section into the velocity of the flow that is constant so therefore the area of cross section at the point a that is pi into r a square into the velocity at the point a that is equal to pi into r b square means the area of cross section at the point b into the velocity at the point b pi and pi will cancel so this 
this will be 2.5 centimeter whole square into 50 at the point A that will be equal to 5 centimeter whole square into velocity at the point B. So therefore velocity at the point A by velocity at the point B that will be 5 centimeter whole square divided by 2.5 centimeter whole square. So that will be centimeter centimeter will cancel. 2.5 to the is 5. So therefore V A by V B that is equal to 4. 4 by A is to VB that is equal to 4 is to 1. So option A is the correct answer. Then in Question number 16, it is told that uh, hydraulic lift works on the principle of the, so it should be Pascal's law, Pascal's law which states that the uh, pressure, so if a pressure difference is created, if a pressure difference if a pressure difference is created at any point in a static fluid, if a pressure difference, if a pressure difference is created, pressure difference is created at any point in a static fluid, at any point in a static fluid, then that pressure difference is distributed undiminished in equal directions throughout the fluid. If a pressure difference is created at any point in a static fluid, then this pressure difference, this pressure difference is distributed, is distributed undiminished, is distributed undiminished throughout all the points in the fluid throughout all the points in that fluid so this is the principle on which the hydraulic lift works so it it has a u-shaped tube where the area of cross-section of one side is lesser a1 and the area of cross section is higher at the other end. So if some force is exerted here then that pressure difference will be created here also which will be used to lift some heavy object. So it means that the pressure that will be created here is P1 that will be F by A1 and that will be equal to the pressure at the point P2 at the point 2 which is um, which will be equal to uh, yeah so it will be here let's say the weight of the object is w so if it can be lifted only if it is the p2 should be equal to w by a2 so therefore we can say that w will be equal to a2 by a1 into f so it means that since a2 is greater than f a2 is greater than a1 so w will be greater than f so it means that it has a mechanical advantage of greater than 1 so it means that more so the so it acts as a force multiplier it acts as a it acts the hydraulic lift acts as a force multiplier it means that a, a higher force can be obtained by applying a lesser force at the other end so hope you have understood the concept of the hydraulic lift so here option d is the correct answer so it is based on pascal's law then it is told that the pressure at the bottom of a liquid tank is not proportional to so the pressure at the bottom of a liquid tank so the outside pressure is p naught which is the atmospheric pressure and that plus we have to do at the, the so the pressure at the 
bottom of the vessel let's say that is p1 so p1 will be equal to p0 plus rho g h where rho is the density of of the liquid and height is the and h is what h is the height of the liquid column in the in the tank h is the height of the liquid in the tank so p1 is equal to p0 plus rho g h so rho is the density of of the liquid in the tank and h is the height of the liquid in the tank and g is the acceleration due to gravity so pressure uh, so therefore you can say that pressure is not proportional pressure is proportional to the density of the liquid and with the acceleration due to gravity also and with the height of the liquid also but pressure is so the pressure is not proportional to the area of the liquid surface it is not proportional to area of the liquid surface so the, therefore option d is the correct answer then here it is told that a cylindrical column uh, a cylindrical con container containing water at, at, uh, has a small hole at a height of h 8 cm from the bottom 8 cm from the bottom at a depth of 2 cm from the top surf top surface of the liquid the maximum horizontal distance traveled by the water before it hits the ground so therefore the hole is here the hole is here so therefore if this is the height h uh, from uh, okay cylindrical container containing water has a small hole at a height of 8 centimeter h equal to 8 centimeter from the bottom uh, and at a depth of 2 centimeter from the top so h is equal to 2 centimeters this is the top surface of the liquid top surface then we know that so according to the velocity of efflux the rule of velocity of efflux uh, is root over 2 gh so it will the water will flow out at the rate at with a velocity of root 2 gh and so at how much distance x it will travel before it hits the ground that is being asked so it will follow a projectile motion here so therefore it will be x will be equal to the velocity v into the time of flight v into t so now t will be how much so i can say that is uh, h is equal to half g t square which is h is equal to half g t square so therefore t will be equal to root over 2 h by g so therefore the distance that the water will travel before it hits the ground the distance that water will travel before it hits the ground that will be x that is equal to v into root over 2 h by g to capital h by g capital H by G so V is equal to root over 2 G so that will be root over 2 G into small h into root over 2 into capital H by G so that will be equal to root over 2 G into H into H divided by G into 2 okay 2 G into H into 2 H by G so this will be G and G will cancel so that is root over 4 root over 4 h into h so that is 2 root over h into h so that will be 2 into square root of 2 into 8 centimeter so that will be 16 so 2 for the 4 to 16 so square root of 16 is 4 4 to the 8 8 centimeter so the distance that the water will travel before hitting the ground before hitting the ground that will be equal to 8 centimeter so option b is the correct answer option b is the correct answer then here it is told that an aluminium sphere is dipped into water this is an aluminium sphere is an aluminium aluminium sphere 
it is dipped in water it is dipped in water which of the following is true buoyancy of water at 0 degree celsius will be same as that in water at 4 degree celsius so the buoyancy in water buoyancy in water at 0 degree celsius will be same as that of 4 degree celsius buoyancy will be less in water at celsius uh, buoyancy will be more okay so we know that we know that the density of water at 4 degree celsius is the highest density of water at 4 degree celsius is maximum is maximum so the density of water at 0 degree celsius that will be obviously less than the density of water at 4 degree celsius so is greater than so now the buoyancy let's say the volume of the aluminum sphere is v so the buoyancy at at 0 degree celsius that will be equal to v into rho naught into g and the buoyancy at 4 degree celsius that will be equal to v into rho 4 into g so now obviously the since v, since rho naught is less than rho 4 so it means that the so since the density at 0 degree celsius is less than density at 4 degree celsius so the buoyancy so the buoyancy at 0 degree celsius also will be less than the buoyancy at buoyancy at 4 degree celsius so buoyancy in water at 0 degree celsius so buoyancy will be less in water at 0 degree celsius than in water at 4 degree celsius so it means option b is the correct answer since the buoyancy of in water at 0 degree celsius will be less than the buoyancy in water at 4 degree celsius since the density of water at 4 degree celsius is uh, is greater than the density of water at 0 degree celsius <laughs> then we shall solve the last question of this class on mechanical properties of fluids okay so it is told that iceberg floats in water with a part of it submerged iceberg floats in water and a part of it is submerged so let's say the volume of the submerged part is vs vs is the volume of the submerged volume of the submerged part volume of the submerged part and v suppose v is the total volume of the iceberg total volume the iceberg then it is told what is the fraction of the volume of iceberg submerged if the density of ice density of ice is 0 0.917 gram per centimeter cube so now density of so it is submerged in water it is submerged in water so we know that the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube so now therefore we know that since the density of i uh, now since the density of ice is less than the density of water so ice will float so ice floats in water now therefore during flotation we know that the buoyancy force or the upthrust the buoyancy force or the upthrust that will be equal to buoyancy force or upthrust that will be equal to the weight of the ice weight of the ice the buoyancy force of exerted by water on the ice that will be equal to the weight of the ice so buoyancy force of water on the ice is the submerged part of the ice into the density of water into g that will be equal to weight of the ice which is the, the total volume of the ice into density of ice into g so here g and g will cancel so i can say that the 
fraction of the volume of the iceberg submerged in the in the ice so it means that we have to find vs by v so vs by v will be rho i by rho w so that will be equal to 0.917 divided by 1 so that is 0.917 so this is the required fraction of the volume that is submerged fraction of the volume that is submerged in the sub fraction of the volume of the ice that is submerged in the water so the answer is 0 0.917 so option c is the correct answer so hope you have understood the solutions of all these questions which we have solved in today's class on mechanical properties of fluids uh, so if you have doubts in any of the steps of the solutions then please write us in the comments section uh, or any other chapter of physics if you feel that it is more difficult for you then also please write the name of that chapter in the comments also please install our sapiens education application since we we shall upload the home homeworks on every chapter and by solving those questions it would be helpful for your kct exam so here we shall end our class so thank you everyone bye